Okay, here we're going to be going through a consolidation here for an intercorporation lease here, and we're going to be looking at an operating lease here. So for an operating lease, the lessor here records the purchased asset and depreciates it. Now the lessor records the rent revenue while the lessee records rent expense. And for the consolidation, it's necessary to eliminate this intercorporation expense and revenue and any related rent receivables and payables on this lease. And for example here, we're going to be looking at Corporation P, the parent, who purchases a machine here for $240,000 that has a five-year life, and depreciating it here in a straight line, we're going to get $48,000 depreciation per year. And that is, they make this purchase here in 1-1 one -one of X-1. And then they lease the machine here to the Corporation S, the subsidiary, on 8-1 X-1, or August 1st here of that first year, as an operating lease. At the year end, the consolidation here is going to be on 1231X1 here at the end of the year. Corporation P, the parent, has owned this machine here for 12 months or one year, and it had it out on lease to Corporation S, the subsidiary here for five months, 8-1 uh, or August 1st through 1231X1. And what we're going to be looking at here is a partial worksheet here for this lease here. And we're going to be looking at the end of year here on 1231X1. And we're going to be looking at the uh, what we have to do here to make our eliminations and our adjustments here for an operating lease. All right, now let's look at our eliminations and adjustments that we have to make for this operating lease here. And we're going to be looking at a partial worksheet here. And it'll be just for the end of year uh, one here, 1231X1. And what we'll be looking at here for this operating operating lease here is we've got some prepaid rents and some deferred uh, rent revenues here and then we have the equipment that's out on lease here that we have to account for and then we have rental income and rental expense here on this lease. So let's first start with our prepaid rents and our deferred revenues here and look at how we would calculate that. So on one one, so for one one x two through eight one x two, this is the second year here where uh, we actually paid for this lease here for one year use of it here on 8-1, actually X-1 here. And it used it for five months here in the first year, year X-1 here. And then we had deferred it uh, seven months here of this uh, a prepaid rent and then deferred revenue here for seven months of X-2. That would be the 1-1 X-2 through 8-1 X-2 here. And uh, it had a $2,000 cost here per month times the seven months here in the second year that gives us fourteen thousand dollars so what we have to do is we have to eliminate this inner corporation receivable and payable here so let's go over to our uh, worksheet here so we have a prepaid rent here on the lease that would we uh, we would have recorded here for fourteen thousand dollars for the sub corporation here that leased it and then we have a deferred revenue here for the parent corporation of fourteen thousand dollars so for our eliminations here we take the prepaid rent uh, uh, for uh, the, on the lease here for the sub corporation and we credit that for fourteen thousand dollars and then this deferred rent revenue here for the uh, parent corporation or the corporation P here we debit that for fourteen thousand dollars Okay, let's look at our rental income and our rental expense here on this lease. Now, the rent expense and revenue here, that's the amount paid and received on August 1st or 8-1 here of X-1. And what is, for this lease here, they're making the total payment here for the year on August 1st of each year here. That was the lease date in this case. And in this case, they were paying 2000 per month times 12 months here. That would be $24,000. Now, looking at it here, we actually received the total amount here as rental income here for on 8-1 for the entire year of the lease here. But we only used it for five months for the first year here, August 1st through December 31st. So what we do here is we deferred the revenue here for the next seven months. That would be in year X2 here. Uh, um, January through 
August 1st of the second year here, and we also had a prepaid rent here by the subcorporation for those seven months. So what we have to do here is we have to eliminate this total amount that we received here on August 1st for the lease payment, and we have to eliminate the expense and revenue here. So for our rental income here by the parent, we debit that for $24,000, and then for a rental expense here for the subsidiary, we'd credit that here for $24,000. All right, the next thing we have to do is reclassify this lease here in our trial balance. So our leaser's asset and its related accumulated depreciation should be reclassified as a normal productive asset rather than property under the operating lease here. So we have a machine cost here of $240,000. That's what they uh, the corporation P, the parent, paid for it. And then the depreciation here we have for one year. We've actually bought it here on January 1st of X1, and it was out here. Our, tri our, uh, our end of year balance here is for 1231X1 here. So we had a $240,000 cost divided by five years straight line depreciation here of 48000 per year. So let's go over to our worksheet here and look at how we'd reclassify this. So we have the equipment under lease here by the parent corporation for $240,000. And then we have an accumulated depreciation, here, depreciation on the lease here for $48,000 or one year's depreciation. So what we do here for the accumulated depreciation, we go over and debit uh, that accumulated depreciation on the lease for $48,000. And then the balancing amount here to reclassify it, we'd accumulated depreciation here for reclassification classification on the lease here of uh, forty eight thousand dollars and then the next thing here is to handle this equipment under lease uh, by the parent here for two hundred forty thousand dollars so we go and we'd credit the equipment under lease here for two hundred forty thousand dollars and then we'd debit the equipment here for reclassification at two hundred forty thousand dollars so what we've done here is we reclassified this equipment here so it's a normal productive asset rather than property under an operating lease All right, now for our income distribution here for Corp P, the parent, and Corp S, the subsidiary for the consolidation. Now the eliminations that were made here in this worksheet do not change the amount of income or distribution between the non-controlling interest here, the subsidiary, and the controlling interest here, the parent. And no adjustments are made to the income distribution schedule for operating leases here. So just going up here to our partial worksheet here. Now what I've shown here are just the uh, eliminations and adjustments that we have to make for the lease here. So these eliminations and adjustments do not affect any distribution of income here for the parent and the subsidiary. But that would have to be calculated with the full uh, a worksheet here for all the other adjustments that would have to be made for the consolidation. But for the operating lease here, it doesn't affect here the income distribution between the parent and the subsidiary.